Hey family, I'm Stephanie Wade. I'm her boss here. I'm in front of the Galveston County Courthouse reading the different signs and all. You see how these double masks abused my face. That's an N95 mask and a regular mask. If you wearing it, quote, the right way, hey, you get your face all bruised up. I only had it on for a little while while I was getting my car stickers you know the little sticker to go inside the car yeah but anyways i got it in a little while like i say my face will get over the bruise marks but anyways it was a statue of some confederate soldier that used to be <laughs> elated for a reason you know in the south a lot of people been knocking down these monuments well, somehow they took the little plaque that was under him down. So I don't know if they're getting ready to remove him or not. I'll show you him in a little while. But I am in front of this Norris Wright Cooney. And you know what? We have a Raccoon Park here. And I didn't know that the guy was black. <laughs> and no. I was living in Galveston all this time, born here, and didn't even know the guy was black, that they had a park that we actually practiced in, you know? That everybody was using this park, but nobody even mentioned that he was black. You know, the one drop rule thing in Texas and the United States from back in the day. But anyways, Norris Raccoonie, since this is still Black History Month, even though I practice it all the time. But anyways, I'll turn it around so y'all can see it in a minute. But it says, Norris Raccoonie, born 1846, died 1898, born a slave on the Walla County plantation of his father, Philip Cooney. Norris Raccoonie was sent to Wild Street School in Pennsylvania for early education. At the age of 17, he moved to St. Louis, found employment on Mississippi River steamboats. Following the Civil War, Cooney moved to Galveston, where in 1867, he helped care for victims of the island's yellow fever epidemic. Interested in politics, he became a leader in the local Republican Party, eventually rising to high office in the state and national party organization. He served as county agent in 1871 and in 1872 was appointed inspector of customs for the District of Texas, a position he held until he was elected Galveston's first black alderman in 1883. As a leader in the Republican Party, Cooney served as chairman of the state convention in 1882 and as a delegate of the national convention in 1876, 1880, 1884, and 1888. He was appointed collector of customs for President Benjamin Morrison in 1889. Norris Wright Cooney was an important political and civic leader in Galveston. A park was dedicated in his memory in 1937. He was buried in Lakeview Cemetery. And like I said, y'all, I didn't even know he was black. We used to go to Raccoonie Park and uh, have little festivals for Holy Rosary School. We used to dance, the little dance of the Maypole and everything there. <laughs> I just didn't know that he was a black man. Go to show you how they just didn't teach us black history in Galveston, even though lots of it happened. Yes, he was mulatto, but he was born <laughs> as an enslaved person. You can't give consent when you're enslaved. So, his father was also his mother's you know what uh, she could not give consent she was an enslaved person and her child since the rule was if your mother was uh, a slave you were a slave too didn't matter who your father was so even though he was half white didn't matter one drop rule he was considered black and was a slave. So anyways, just a little bit of Texas history for y'all. Now I'm going to turn this camera around so y'all can see. Okay, y'all. 
This is it, a Texas post. They're showing about Norris Wright Coney. And if y'all want to learn more about him, just Google him, y'all. I'm sure to show up even more information. But anyway, y'all, this is the Galveston County Courthouse where I just got my uh, sticker for my car. I want y'all to see it's a nice sunny day. So y'all won't be worrying about me being in the cold or snow or ice or whatever. It's a nice warm day in Galveston. And let y'all see my environment. The Virgin Mary is still on top of the cathedral. And they say as long as she's there, Galveston will not perish from a hurricane. Okay, here's that soldier I was telling y'all about. Confederate soldier. Everybody's tearing down Confederate statues. We had them in front of the courthouse. And I'll let y'all see how they took the plaque off. So I don't know if he'll be next to go down. I don't know. But see right there, the plaque that used to be talking about him as a hero is taken down. But it definitely was there last year, y'all, so I don't know when they took that plaque away from this statue. But it definitely was a Confederate soldier that they were calling a hero. Somebody who was fighting to keep us enslaved, you know? And anyway, I'm glad his plaque is removed. Hopefully he'll be removed next. I'll talk to y'all about what happened to me when I went to get my my uh, car inspection done because you know you have to get your car inspection done before you can get your little sticker for the car because it's a license plate renewal as well as inspection sticker two-in-one system here anyway hope y'all enjoying my little view of where I am right now you know by the time I upload it it'll be about where I've been which is a good idea for women by themselves show where you've been and not where you are and not be telecasting about where you're going so any of y'all who me want to know when I'm going somewhere what time y'all know i'm not telling y'all it ain't safe y'all trying to stay safe as possible and anyways galveston is a pretty place and i hope y'all hearing the birds singing just a matter of listening just like when I'm in a motherland beautiful birds singing hope y'all enjoying all the greenery I know some of y'all is in the snow and the ones that's not in the snow it's still different kinds of trees so Hopefully y'all enjoying the different kinds of trees that we have here in, in the South, in the United States. Sometimes I just want to share what's around. Lots of palm trees. And they did that to beautify Galveston. Wasn't necessarily always here. I'll sit out on the beach and talk to y'all about what happened when I went to get my inspection stick. I think it was pretty touching. Anyway, hold on. Guys, 
I think I want to talk to y'all about perceptions as a kid <laughs> what happens as an adult when you find out better or as a teenager when you find out better this is the Rosenberg library not the colored branch that I showed y'all the other day <clears throat> I actually got my first library card right here yeah, I did. The nuns took us here. It says the oldest free public library in continuous operation in Texas, established and endowed in 1900 by the will of Henry Rosenberg, 1824-1893, a native of Switzerland who came to Galveston in 1843 and achieved prominence as a banker and merchant. In his will, he stated, in making this bequest, I desire to express in practical form my affection for the city of my adoption and for the people among whom I have lived for so many years, trusting that it will, that it will aid their intellectual and moral development and be a source of pleasure and profit to them and their children and their children's children through many generations. This library is the successor to the Galveston Mercantile Library established by the Chamber of Commerce in 1870, donated to the city of Galveston in 1874 and absorbed by the Rosenberg Library in 1905. Collections include over one million books, manuscripts, letters, documents, objects of art, and historic memorabilia. The library is one of the major repositories of original documents and artifacts related to Texas history. Well, guys, when I was younger, I actually thought Henry Rosenberg was Abraham Lincoln, y'all. My cousins and I would come over here, take all kinds of pictures, never get them developed because it was so expensive to us back in the day so we thought anyways to get film developed so we took plenty of pictures sitting on his lap and stuff and did not develop it but anyway guys as a teenager and adult i found out that it really was henry rosenberg and not abraham lincoln so i saw the washington monument so many times and back in the day i ain't gonna lie i thought all Caucasians looked alike. So why wouldn't I think he was Abraham Lincoln, my cousins and I. So we thought we was fortunate to have our version of Abraham Lincoln right here in Galveston. But Abraham Lincoln slash Henry Rosenberg. Beautiful library though. And I came here plenty of times with my library card once the nuns brought us here to get our library card. All about perceptions, guys. No, he wasn't Abraham Lincoln, but we sure thought he was. I'll let y'all see one more thing that I thought was something else as a kid. <laughs> thought y'all get a kick out of that. Guys, I thought this was the Statue of Liberty, believe it or not. When I was a kid, I thought Galveston had its own Statue of Liberty. Of course it wasn't. It's a statue of something, some tribute to some soldiers or something. And they said that the person, that uh, statue on the top showed them the red light district back in the day when the soldiers got off the boat. They knew where, you know, who was the ladies and other, other night. I don't know if that's true or not, but one of the ladies is pointing toward the waterfront, which used to be the red light district. I definitely thought it was the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. I was an adult before I found out it wasn't the Statue of Liberty, y'all. <laughs> that the Statue of Liberty was really in New York.
you know, kids. It's all about perception. And this is the George Seeley house. Galveston had a bunch of millionaires, y'all. I wasn't related to none of them, of course. It was donated to UTMB Health, so I don't know what they actually use it for right now. But it's the Sealy House. Yeah, the Sealy House. They were cousins to the Moody's. The Moody House is just straight down the street from here. Just wanted y'all to see a little of what I'm seeing, that's all. Just walking on Broadway by the Sealy House that's donated to the University of Texas Medical Branch right now. Beautiful place, y'all. And this is just Broadway, Galveston, which is one of them, well, the main street in Galveston. That's what it is. And forgive the noise, you know, I'm doing a live recording. No editing. Don't edit out the sound anyway. Well, guys, this is 29th Street Beach View. This is the Pleasure Pier. It was a, in existence when my mother was young. When I was young, of course, it wasn't operating at all. But now it's back in operation. The beach is still as beautiful as ever. We have all this artsy stuff on the beach, on the benches that you sit down on. See, they have the dolphins and whales and all that. Got all kind of little tourist things so you can see that Galveston and the Gambia have a lot in common that I can think of. The beach, because it is completely surrounded by water. It's an island. And so you can see the beach. And the beach to me doesn't look any different than the beach there except for the beach in the Gambia looks like Galveston when I was growing up. You know, because Galveston looked like little Africa. But we didn't think of it that way because we didn't know any different. Just like when you get to the motherland, the people that's been there all along and not traveled anywhere where well, they are minority they don't know anything about concepts of race they know about different people's groups some people say tribe some people say people's group or whatever other group i don't know but anyways definitely not seeing uh as color if everybody pretty much it's similar in color that wouldn't be what separated you from somebody else but anyways back in the day we had 28th street beach 29th street beach and west beach now of course everybody is here now before then caucasians was on uh, east beach and everybody was satisfied with where they were supposed to be. Now it's no place. You can be wherever you wanna be, but it has its pluses and 
disadvantages because now you pretty much got to be searching when you're in Galveston to see people look like you you have to be a participant in community activities just to see people that look like you or if you belong to a, a church where they look like you wouldn't be a mosque because the mosque that's here everybody looks like they're from someplace else anyways I know because my son goes there and when I dropped him off before before he had a car I could see that wasn't very many people there looking like him but anyways this does not look like the motherland forest people that's here here I'm a minority but anyway the beach is beautiful just the same y'all just want y'all to see a little of the beach because I know y'all should be tired of me recording in the house and in the backyard since it's a beautiful day I wanted y'all to see the day and get to see the water y'all might be all in the snow or somewhere where you're not seeing water so enjoy y'all I'm just on the pier letting y'all see some of this we got seagulls for the birds And just so y'all can see what's going on. Hope y'all enjoy. I always like the view from the pier. Used to like crab from this pier back in the day with my aunt and mama was kind of fun going crabbing just have your little chicken bone chicken neck sticking in a basket little crab kitchen basket and sure enough the crabs are just running out and we'll have all kind of crab to eat when we get home mostly crab gumbo mostly crab gumbo I'll tell y'all a quick story in a minute. I just wanted to take y'all to the end of this pier before I turn this camera around. Hope y'all enjoying. It's the Pleasure Pier again. And that's Seawall Boulevard in front of us where the cars are driving. This is 29th and 28th Street Beach, Galveston, Texas. The water is just so shining, y'all, glittering. And no, you cannot walk out into the water around here. This is all just the pier, the waterfront. No more going down there to catch crabs. We have land subsidence issues now. I know y'all can hear the water breaking. It. So pretty, y'all. I hope y'all enjoying this. I'll open it up a little bit. There you go. Turn it around and tell y'all something that happened to me today that I thought was pretty cool. Well, guys, I went to get my car inspected today and get my oil changed. And I was going to just leave it at that, you know. 
But when I got done, my service guy asked me how was I opening my car. And I just told him that I just used the key to open it. Because <laughs> I had a little automatic lock. But it fell on the ground several times. So this part is missing. The plastic is missing. And you used to could put a smaller key inside of it. Just touch the button and it would open my car. But one of my sons, who will remain nameless, pushed too hard on this inner, inner button and it's permanently pressed down. Well, the guy at the service desk said, could I replace it for you? It'll cost less than a hundred dollars. And I told him, I said, are you sure? Cause we just replaced a, a key like that on my other son's car. And it was like almost $400 for one key. And if I wouldn't have had my key, it would have had cost the price double because you had to buy two keys. You couldn't get one key made if you didn't have one key left out of a set. So since I had the other key, it cost almost $400, y'all, for real. So I was hesitant to get a key for my car. I was just doing what was necessary. But when I opened it with the key, of course the alarm would go off and I'd have to hear up the key in the ignition to turn it on for the uh, horn alarm to cut off. But anyways, he said that it wasn't safe for me to use it like that and that he knew how to uh, program the key so I, I would have to do is pay for the replacement key part and that he would program it for me for free so it was like being in a motherland and bargaining the price down because everything's negotiable but this way I didn't bargain anything he actually gave me his best price <laughs> and he says he doesn't do it for what everybody and that's what they say in the motherland. For you, for you, you are my friend. Special price. <laughs> so it's nice to know that people are kind to me no matter where I am, whether it's in the motherland or it's here. Whether it's people that look like me or people that look nothing like me, y'all. He was not in my ethnic group at all, but he still felt compassion for me that I was using this jacked up key. So I appreciated the kindness and I accepted the kindness. Like they say, random acts of kindness are out there in the universe. And sometimes the good that you do comes back to you and your lifetime y'all. I thought that was so nice. I love being a recipient of kindness too. So like I said, y'all, treat people like you want to be treated. I accept the kindness of others no matter who they are. And I try to treat everybody like I want to be treated. It's not all just because of uh, how they look. For real, I'm just not like that. I treat everybody like I want to be treated. That's it. Now, if they're not kind, well, then I avoid them. Like my grandmother say, treat them with a long handle spoon. And so that's what I do. But anyways, I'm going to let y'all go because people are coming and I'm going to have to put this mask back on. And I know it's a lot of trouble trying to hear me with this mask on. So until next time, peace, peace, power to the people, and I'm out, y'all. Bye.